Greetings fellow YouTube viewers, it's time for another compendium video. Today we will be covering some 7th grade science content. First we come on to the topic of atoms and molecules. In a very fundamental sense, atoms and molecules are the building blocks of everything that is around us. If you change an atom, you change the property of something. So if you're watching this on a phone, for instance, uh, if you change the atoms that the material of your phone was made out of, then you could change the phone itself. So you could make it so that the phone was made of hydrogen and it would explode. Or um, if it was made of, you know, if it was made of nitrogen, it would just vaporize, etc., etc. So atoms and molecules play a very important role uh, in shaping how, what is in the world around us. So it's very important that you understand what they are. So atoms and molecules are then made up of smaller units, protons, neutrons, and electrons. We'll go through each of these. So protons are in red. They are at the center of the atom. As you can see, these circles are atoms. And the perfect circles, the dots in the middle, are the particles. So the red dots are protons. Protons tend to have a positive charge. And basically, uh, opposite charges repel and like charge opposite charges attract and like charges repel. I've already done a video on that, so you can always check out my other videos over here. And um, so protons have positive charges and they're located in the center of the atom. They're also quite heavy in comparison to electrons. Neutrons have zero charge. They're shown in green and they also make up the center of the atom or the nucleus. The only reason neutrons exist is so that protons don't sort of rip the atom apart because as mentioned, the protons are positive charge and positive charges repel. So to stop the nucleus from ripping itself apart in all nuclei except for the nucleus of a hydrogen atom, which has only one proton, um, there are neutrons. And then we have electrons. Electrons uh, have a negative charge, but they have almost no mass. So protons and neutrons have a lot of mass in comparison to electrons. So we generally ignore the mass of the electrons because it's so small, it doesn't even matter. Right, so these uh, structures here. So protons, neutrons, and electrons combine together to form atoms. So this is a helium atom. How do we know it's a helium atom? because it has two protons. So the protons are like the identity of the uh, atom, kind of like your parents. If you changed your parents, you can't really change your parents without changing you, you know? Like if you had different parents, then you would be a different person. So protons define the atom. Neutrons, on the other hand, can be changed. Neutrons are kind of like your brothers and sisters, you can think of them like that. Like, if you change your brothers and sisters, like how many you have, um, you would probably end up with a different family. In some cases, your family would be more stable. In some cases, that's kind of mean, uh, but um, but it's true sometimes. Uh, and in some cases, your family would be less stable. But it wouldn't change you as much as a person. So protons are a fundamental property of atoms. If you change the number of protons an atom has, then you change the atom. So you can't have a helium atom with three protons. You will get a lithium proton, a lithium atom. And you can't have a lithium atom with two protons, then you will simply get a helium atom. But you can change the number of neutrons in certain limited ways because sometimes the atoms aren't stable without a certain number of neutrons. Because like I mentioned, the neutrons also help hold the nucleus together. And then the electrons, you can also change these around. So the electrons are far less significant, uh, far less important uh, to the stability. So electrons can be changed. And sometimes the electrons are the same as the protons. 
then the atom is balanced in it in terms of charges so it has a charge of zero but other times what happens is the electrons and protons have an imbalance so sometimes there's more protons so you're on the light side sometimes it has more electrons and you're on the dark side yeah so anyway these are atoms now we come to molecules basically this is a helium atom and this one is an oxygen atom so the thing about a helium atom is it's quite stable it doesn't need other atoms to bond to it can exist on its own it doesn't need any others it's sort of an independent atom we call this a noble gas atom and helium is a noble gas but most of the atoms most of the plebs um, they can't well it, they are in an unstable state without having other atoms so uh, for instance an oxygen atom it's in an unstable state on its own so it needs to bond to something else it bonds to another oxygen atom here it can also bond to hydrogen atoms and hydrogen atoms can also need to bond to either another hydrogen atom or an oxygen or some other kind of atom and so the state when you have a bunch of atoms basically bonded together is a molecule so this is an oxygen molecule where you have two oxygen atoms bonded together this is a hydrogen molecule I know crazy right which consists of two hydrogen atoms bonded together but here's where it gets interesting this is not a hydroxygen atom this is an uh, th this is not a hydroxygen molecule this is a molecule of water so here you have an oxygen bonded to two hydrogens and it becomes water now to those of you who might have a bit of background knowledge you know that hydrogen is a gas oxygen is a gas that's why we breathe it in but water is generally a liquid so this shows that uh, molecules can have completely different properties to the atoms that made them up all right so what are elements elements so here we have three different groups of elements here we have a bunch of helium nuclei these as I mentioned they don't need to bond to anything else so they can exist in a pure state as a noble gas here we have oxygen elements here we have the element of oxygen where we have only oxygen atoms sure they're bonded to each other but the, you only have one kind of atom and that is oxygen and here we have the element of hydrogen sure you have hydrogen bonded together uh, with other hydrogens but it's all the same kind of element it's all uh, hydrogen so they're all the same kind of atoms and so when a substance that you're given is made up of only one kind of atom so whether it's helium oxygen hydrogen carbon whatever atom that may be then it's an element so elements are quite pure now we come to compounds compounds are when uh, different kinds of atoms bond with each other so here we have hydrogen here we have oxygen and uh, water sorry I was trying to do a pineapple pen thing Never mind. so uh, these involve chemical reactions so they basically combine or break away and you can make equations for this and this is what chemistry is about so this is just like an introduction to chemistry so hydrogen and oxygen react to form water and water like I mentioned uh, is a compound that's made up of different kinds of atoms hydrogen and oxygen and the properties of water are different from the properties of oxygen and they're also different from the properties of hydrogen so uh, this is why we have so many different kinds of substances because the substances can also combine together so we have only got 118 or so uh, elements but we have thousands of substances because they can combine in different ways so think of them like building blocks like Lego blocks even if you have only 118 different colors which is pretty impressive uh, you can still combine them in different ways to create new bigger blocks so those bigger blocks are like compounds 
are like molecules. And then if you have a building made up of different big blocks, they're of different uh, colors, then that's basically a compound. So water is a compound, for instance. Sugar is a compound. It's a very sweet compound. Who says chemistry can't be sweet? Anyway, now lastly, but not least, no, not last, uh, next we come to the mixtures. Mixtures are essentially um, what exactly what they sound like. When you have different kinds of uh, elements and compounds mixing together, but not reacting with each other, then you have a mixture. So notice here how the water uh, vapor, probably, the helium gas and the oxygen are mixed together, but they're not really reacting with each other. Notice how there is no hydrogen, because if there was a hydrogen, it would react with the oxygen, and that wouldn't be a mixture anymore. So in mixtures, there are no chemical reactions going on, and it's just a mixture of different kinds of elements, compounds, and any kind of things. So mixtures are pretty common as well. For instance, if you've ever drunk a glass of milk, milk is a mixture. And this is why you can separate it into um, sort of the creamy layer, and then you have the whey and all those other milk products. Because milk is not one thing, it's a mixture of different uh, compounds and elements. But not all mixtures can be easily separated. For instance, if you've ever been to the sea, the salt water that you find in the sea is also a mixture. And you have to boil that water to separate it. So yeah, there's mixtures as well. So there's elements, compounds, and mixtures. Now that you uh, we've covered all that, uh, we can go on to describe the chemical formulae. So sometimes we're given a molecule and we're just, uh, we have to find the chemical formula of that molecule. So here we're given a water molecule and we have to try and find the chemical formula. So when you're finding the chemical formula, you look for uh, how many of each atom are there. So here you have two hydrogen atoms, so H2 and one oxygen atom, O. Uh, so you write it as H2O. The order, it's not arbitrary, but you will learn uh, in the future which one comes first, why H comes first, why H comes before O here, and why O comes before H here. Uh, it's mostly just convention, like the way people long, long ago start writing it, and then people just kind of use the same system. Now helium, this is not even a, this is just a single atom, so you just write He. Oxygen, again, this is an element, but it's made up of different, of two different atoms of oxygen. So you write O2, because you have two oxygens, two oxygen atoms. And this, this is very interesting. So this is a hydroxide ion. And this one has a charge. So this was what I was talking about. You can have excess electrons or less electrons. You can have an imbalance between positive and negative. The dark side and the light side. You may have an imbalance of the force. So this, but when you do, it's called an ion. So this is a hydroxide ion. You have one oxygen and one hydrogen. And they form OH, like you would write it. Uh, it's the opposite of how you write it here. But then you also put a negative. So if there's, for all of these uh, three substances, these three molecules and atoms, uh, we didn't put anything here. That means that the charge is zero. But when you have a negative or a positive or a negative two or a positive three or whatever, then it means that it's not, uh, that means that the molecule is charged. Anyway, I hope this was useful to you guys. Uh, make sure to keep on uh, giving your comments, giving your feedback to me. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share. See you again.